All right, in this video, we're just going to look at a few of the basic presets and settings of default brushes inside of Photoshop. And this will help you gain a little bit of an understanding on how brushes work, and then we'll lead into doing some digital painting. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here is just come over to my background layer, double click it and press OK here. So that converts that to a regular layer. Now, in these videos, I'm actually using a drying tablet. And the reason why I'm using a drying tablet is it helps me kind of get a little bit more natural flow when we're painting here. And then also I'll be able to show you some of the tilt and pressure sensitive features that a drying tablet can take advantage of inside of Photoshop. So <clears throat> you can follow along with the mouse. There's no need to get a drying tablet. I just wanted to make you aware that I'm using one of these videos. Now, the first thing I wanna do is just come over here and select the brush tool. And you can see there's several types of brush tools. We'll be, we'll be looking at these here in a minute. We're just gonna start off with the default brush. Now, the brush tool, essentially, if we come up here and look at its settings, you can just click this little teeny tiny um, icon here. And this tells you basically what your current brush is loaded as. And if you select the option right next to that, this shows you the brush presets. Now I'm gonna expand this dialog a little bit here. And a brush in Photoshop is essentially made up of three things. You have your size, which is basically you know how big your brush is. You have the hardness, which is basically how soft or the, the softness or opacity or feathering of the brush edge. And then you have what's known as the brush tip. Now all of these presets in this section right here are showing you the brush tips. And the default brush tip is sort of this circular tip right here. But Photoshop supports a, a wide variety of brush tips. You can see there's some brush tips in this area that are meant to simulate and emulate actual real world brushes. Um, there's some airbrush tips, there's bristle brushes, erodible brush tips like for pencil and graphite to simulate that. There's static brush tips, which are these down here in this area, which are basically images that can be used as a brush. You can sit here and paint the little uh, leaves there. So there's uh, multiple brush tips, if you will, for Photoshop. So I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate a few of the settings here on the size and hardness and give you a quick explanation of how Photoshop uses these brush tips. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this dialog really quick. Just click up there again. And I'm just gonna press Control Z and uh, just undo a few steps here. Control Option Z, which is actually stepping back in my history, so I'm back to a blank slate. And I'll just stick with the same color I've got here. I'm just gonna choose a regular old round brush here, and you can see this size works fine. Now, if I just draw from left to right here, you can see that Photoshop creates a nice line, but if we zoom in, you'll actually notice that on this brush, let me scroll up here a little bit where I zoomed in, there seems to be these little teeny tiny sort of hills, if you will, little hills and valleys. And that's because Photoshop, when it creates a brush, really all it's doing here is it's painting one dot there, one dot there, one dot there, one dot there, one dot there. And it just does that in rapid succession. And when you draw, Photoshop is painting all of those. Now it's really hard to see those if you work with a brush that has a soft edge. So if I get my hardness and I take that all the way down to 0% and I come back here and paint from left to right, you really can't see those little valleys in there. But when you work with a hard edged brush or a brush that has 100% hardness and you paint, then you start to see those. And that's because Photoshop just takes whatever brush tip you have and it applies little dollops, if you will, of paint as fast as it can. And that's what creates a stroke from a brush inside of Photoshop is the tip and it applies those at a rate. Now the rate at which Photoshop applies these little dollops is, is uh, factored in the brush settings. So I'm gonna toggle this little icon right here you can see on your keyboard. It's the little sort of folder right there. And this will bring up the brush presets over here. Now the brush presets panel inside of Photoshop has all sorts of goodies, which we'll take a little bit of a look later on, more detail inside of here. But what I want you to pay attention right now is just this one right here called spacing. And if I crank the spacing way up here, you can see that that spaces out each individual dollop. And now when I come over here and paint a stroke, those little spots are way spaced out. If I come all the way to 0% or it looks like 1% and paint, it's a really, really smooth edge because it's placing these little circles so close together that you really can't see the edge. 
I think the default in here is um, uh, somewhere around 25% or something. Now, the reason why the default is 25% is because if you go all the way to zero and you have a really complex shape, you might not get a natural stroke. You may paint something like this and your graphics processor isn't fast enough to paint those thousands of little teeny tiny dots as you move the mouse. And so you may sort of get these jittery edges. And that's why the default here is up to 25% so that it doesn't quite have to do as much graphics processor work. So depending on your computer and your hardware, you may have varying results with that brush. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and select everything. I'll get out of this little brush presets panel here. And I'm gonna select everything. And I'm just gonna fill with my background color there, which is white for me. So I did the keyboard shortcut of Command Delete. And I'll just deselect there. <clears throat> now, just a couple of keyboard shortcuts here uh, when you're working with the brush tool. If you use the right bracket key, that's right above, um, well, I guess depending on your keyboard, but it's below the plus and minus keys. The right bracket key, increases the brush size. The left bracket key decreases the brush size. So you can sort of quickly just hit those and increase that a little bit and paint with another one. If you hold down shift and do the right bracket key, that changes the brush's hardness. So I'm hitting shift right and that is 100% hardness. If I hold down shift left bracket and hit it four or five times, that's 0% hardness. Now that shift right bracket and left bracket actually goes in 25% increments. You can sort of watch this value right here. If I hit shift right bracket, it will increase once, went up to 25. If I do it again, that's up to 50. If I do it again, that's up to 75, etc., etc. So it goes 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. Um, so that's a couple of keyboard shortcuts there for increasing and decreasing your brush size and increasing and decreasing the brush hardness. All right, let's look at one last shortcut here for working with brush uh, size. This one's kind of a little bit weird, but if you hold down the Alt and Control keys on your keyboard and click your mouse button and drag to the right, it will increase the diameter. So you see we're changing the size of the brush. While these are still held down, if I drag up with the mouse or down with the mouse, this changes the hardness. And this little red circle is essentially just showing the, you the preview of how that's going to be affected. But that's kind of a quick way, just those two keys there, Alt and or Option and Control, depending on if you're a Mac or a PC, and drag to the right or left, and you can quickly change your brush settings and uh, sort of work, with, work away that way. I tend to use the bracket keys, um, but you can also just come up here manually and adjust the hardness and size of the brushes as well.